Hello everybody and welcome back to Bocho's Brothers channel. This is the first episode in a long series on the different regions of Etheris. The five main regions of Etheris. Um, the land of Grim Hollow. And we'll be starting today with the region which is farthest to the north, the Grarjord. This is a region of ice, primordial winds, snow, cold, wild tribes of half-orcs and humans and uh, druids all in a violent combat to control the area. There's also cold fire coming in and we are about to learn all about that in this episode. Okay, so to start with, um, this land, you can find out about it in the Grim Hollow book. They talk about there being a tome called the Lord Eda and the Lord Eda explains the history of the land that it was once uh, completely controlled by uh, primordial forces like uh, fire, ice, earth, and wind. And a uh, hero and his adventuring party went to the north to tame the land. The hero's name was Kentigern. And he and his companions were able to come up and tame the land thousands of years ago. And they then um, fought a giant worm which was in the land, which um, they did kill. This worm's name was Quajath the Undermaw. And uh, in my campaign, I believe I'm going to use Quajas the Undermall as uh, this worm here, the, the, the great worm Gormadraug. Sorry, in, in, in Atheris, it's the great worm Gormadraug. And I'm going to be using Quajas the Undermall from this book here, uh, Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount. As you can see, people are kind of going insane eating off of this worm and have formed a cult. And uh, so, yeah, like I said, I like to cross and combine different worlds. Um, so in this area of Thrull, which is the area to the west of the Grajord, is where you would find this uh, worm uh, frozen beneath the ice and uh, there's this group the prismatic circle who are concerned that this worm is going to return uh, this ancient god and if it is to be awakened like um, in Viking uh, mythology um, it would destroy the world so this um, prismatic circle of druids is is attempting to keep that from happening although they are also a little bit insane and uh, they have some in their ranks that are even uh, crazier trying to sacrifice um, elementals and other druids in order to perhaps awaken this worm. So that's going on over in this region of Thrull. There are also wild tribes, uh, a total of three that split apart from the original six that are uh, controlling that area. They're very violent. They're like um, very Viking-like, uh, raiding, pillaging, and uh, generally causing lots of, uh, lots of trouble. Um, even out here on this little island of Tyburn is where they have their Viking ships, and then they come down in along the coast of the Emerald Sea here to uh, raid um, into the Burak Empire. Um, which has been at war also with the uh, with this uh, Grauljord historically, um, and so there's a total of six Valakan clans. You have three that are kind of here in the Thrall side that are the wild ones to the west, and then you have over here to the east Kandar, and in Kandar you have. Um, uh, tribes who are trying to evolve and to maybe uh, negotiate with other lands like Ostoya and the Burak Empire and um, so that's from around Sommerhelm and Christ uh, and all the way to Fort Kentigern you have um, groups of uh, monks who, who are trying to uh, keep things safe 
they've created a, a large prison for evil druids, uh, madmen, and uh, other criminals called the Cold Iron Keep. And uh, those tribes are split up, these ones of Kandar, are split up into the clan Mithra, who are uh, mostly into trade and order. And then there's clan Lingri, which is kind of more of a religious order of monks. I can imagine the monks uh, from the Chanathar's expansion who can use more elemental powers uh, living there. And then you have Lor uh, Clan Morgong, which is a clan of uh, black, kind of a black market, handling illegal items, kind of like the Black Company. And uh, it's a land that's quite lawless and um, uh, out of control of the law of the empire. And so it's a great place to run a campaign. There are werewolves running uh, loose. There are several um, little factions of werewolves. Some are peaceful. For example, there's a uh, NPC you find in the book named Canaan Alabaster. And I placed him here in the north. He's an herbalist who is looking for uh, a lichbane incense to um, find a remedy to this lycanthropy. And he's running around with this pack of wolves called the Raven Wolves tribe, who are, yeah, they're, they're not looking to cause much trouble. And then there's another pack of wolves led by uh, Leif Sarvif, and he is, uh, he's part of a tribe of werewolves that's, that's in direct conflict with, uh, well, he, he had a giant battle with a half-orc named Thorgard, uh, who used this ancient weapon of great power that has, it's like a blade with flame on one side, frost on the other. And this half-orc Thargard is um, rumored to be the reincarnation of Kentagern, that original hero that thousands of years ago went to the north, uh, united the tribes, slayed the great worm, and fought off the Burak Empire. Um, you also have a lake here called Frostmere, and in Frostmere Lake you have uh, the Frostmere Fortress of the Melwarg Frost Giants, and they're led by an evil king named King Ulog, which would provide an entirely other interesting adventure of taking on um, frost giants and what have you. And the thing I love about this is you get enough uh, history and background to start to dream about different things you could do in the campaign but uh, as they say in the Grim Hollow guide on page four here which I quite enjoyed uh, they say here I love this uh, this world is yours too I'll just read to you from that for a second here the stories you tell in Etheris belong to you and your game group we promise not to come yell at you uh, if you get the details of the world wrong or change them to suit your own game. In fact, that's the point. We've intentionally left questions for you to answer and conflicts for you to decide. So I'm going to include a link in uh, the description below uh, where they have a great map of the continent of Etheris. So you can also see and begin to dream how you might combine your other books and worlds into this one. Um, like I said, I'm going to be using Explorer's Guide to Wildmount to bring in uh, Quajath the Undermaw in place of the Great Worm Gormadraug, so it's totally possible. I'm even going to use Icewind Dale, that uh, book, and put Ten Towns uh, somewhere in here in the Graujord, maybe uh, close to Hrist. So Hrist is kind of like the main city or... Uh, bastion of uh, salvation amongst all of the snow and danger of the north. I might put ten towns there. And uh, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of more the peaceful region among these mountains in the center, if you can call it peaceful. It's, it's safer than among those other tribes. But the problem is uh, here to the east above the Shadow Storm Gulf we have a problem of this cold fire breaking out and cold fires it's like a, a natural forest fire but the fire is blue it can uh, burn over snow and ice um, it has that icy burning feeling to it 
and there's nothing that can stop it. It just, once it starts spreading or it pops up, it spreads and all you can do is run from it. And that problem has originated just recently in the past 10 years from the area of Volgen. And so we have monks at Fort Kentigern, um, this order of the Kentigern monks who are attempting to uh, stop this with a great ice wall and uh, they have created an ice bridge which they are attempting to stop that cold fire from spreading but um, as you can see at the top of the map uh, next to the sea of turmoil you have this island of the Cindergast, and there i believe we have elemental disruption lots of problems going on there my whole campaign and they have three uh, little uh, stories or short um, modules in this book. Mine started out with the first one, The Tavern of the Lost, and I, I had that take place with the party uh, all for different reasons escaping to the north from the plague or from the religious uh, uh, persecutions of the south and they got lost in this forest next to Summerhelm and ended up in the Tavern of the Lost and now they've made their way down to uh, Runheim. So that's kind of what's going on here one last uh, little shout out i'm going to bring this this into my campaign it's a uh, game called wizardry uh, wizardry 7 specifically because it's got all kinds of good stuff in here and i will be bringing in these races of the t-rang this kind of spider like race and the umpani which are this race of uh uh, rhinoceros-like, uh, noble, admirable people with muskets. And I, in my campaign, I'm going to have it so that they've crashed either in the island near Tyborn or up near uh, Cold Iron Keep. And they are going to be searching for some something. I haven't decided quite what yet, but um, they will be uh, in the campaign as well. So combining all of these different ideas and histories into one uh, i think we're gonna have a fantastic campaign icewind dale of course uh, can take place there at Trist with the ten towns and that concludes our first view at etheris our uh, tour of the five regions of the continent um so be sure to uh, tune in for our next episode i believe we'll be going to the burak empire but until then, enjoy your adventures, and I'll see you next time.